First, I want to thank you, Steve Bannon. I've been listening to you daily for three years. I'm an American citizen living in Israel, but spend much of my time traveling America, lecturing and teaching in churches and Christian seminaries all across the country. More importantly, I'm a proud member of the Posse. I'm in full agreement with almost every position promoted by the War Room. Steve, you may not know me, but I know you very well. You're a part of my daily life. Since Hamas invaded Israel on Saturday morning, Steve, as usual, you have been asking important questions. How did Israeli and U.S. intelligence miss this attack? Did they miss it? Is Israel's army and leadership too woke and too weak? On all these questions, I and the majority of Israel's citizens agree with your concerns. These are questions we're asking too. You've raised concerns that the U.S. military will be drawn into this conflict. You've repeatedly predicted that there will be a call for U.S. personnel to enter the fight. While I do not speak for the Israeli leadership, I can say with confidence that Israel has never and will never ask that personnel from any other nation be put in harm's way fighting our battles for us. Despite U.S. military bases all over the Middle East, there is almost zero U.S. presence in Israel, save for a few dozen technical people helping with the Iron Dome system. Will the Israel lobby in Washington, the rhinos, and the neocons use this war as a pretext to serve their own agenda and further bankrupt the United States? They most certainly will. And on all these points, Steve, I firmly agree with you. But here's where I believe that you were wrong and I pray you will change your thinking. Over these few days, you've continually called for de-escalation. You've cited fears of a wider Mideast war. What would you have Israel do? One of the guiding principles of the populist nationalism that you and I ascribe to is that nations must act in their own self-interest for the protection and benefit of their own citizens first. Do you really think that de-escalation is in Israel's best interest? Hamas is not a terrorist organization. It's the democratically elected leadership of Gaza. Despite popular claims to the contrary, all indications are that Gaza's citizens support Hamas and its aims. Hamas's military wing is effectively the armed forces of this mini-state. The immediate goal of their invasion was not the destruction of Israel. The goal was to murder Jews and terrorize the population. If at the conclusion of this war, Hamas is still in power, if Hamas is still a functioning entity, they will declare unequivocal victory and they'll be right. The only acceptable outcome for Israel is total destruction of Hamas. Will this include civilian casualties? It most certainly will. And just as the bombings of Dresden and the Japanese cities in World War II were justified for the defeat of Germany and Japan, civilian casualties are unfortunately going to be necessary for the full defeat of this evil. So as you advocate for de-escalation, Steve, keep in mind that you may be advocating for a Hamas victory and for the emboldening of Iran and Hezbollah. Which brings me to the final point that I believe you are missing, and it's the most important point of all. Over the years, you have taught us how inextricably linked, as you are fond of saying, the various crises in the world are. And as you have said many times, we are in the midst of a spiritual battle for Judeo-Christian civilization. Steve, we do not get to choose when and how this spiritual battle goes kinetic. Our enemies have a say, and when they rise up against us, we must defeat them. Right now in the streets of the U.S., in cities, and throughout the world, the left is showing its true colors. They're celebrating the murder and rape of Jews in Israel. The atheist left and the Islamic mullahs might appear to be strange bedfellows until we realize what they have in common. They despise the word of the God of the Bible, the God of Israel. The return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel after 2,000 years of exile represents the greatest living proof of that God's dominion over history and the truth of the prophecies of Moses, Isaiah, Zechariah, and all the rest. There is nothing the left and the Muslims fear more than the fulfillment of the prophetic words of the Bible that you and I both hold to be the inerrant word of God. Israel will begin destroying Hamas. And as the campaign progresses, the Biden administration, along with its worldwide apparatus, will intensify pressure on Israel to back off. Israel needs MAGA squarely in its camp. We need MAGA's voice speaking loudly against the pressure on Israel that is sure to come. Israel has a powerful military with the most advanced technology. We have a strong economy. I agree that MAGA must oppose financial and material aid, full stop. And I share your concerns about this conflict metastasizing into something worse. But this opposition must not stop MAGA from having Israel's back 
as we do what we need to do to utterly defeat Hamas. Israel needs America's moral support in the media war, not its money and certainly not its soldiers. Steve, you're a man of faith. You're someone who sees the bigger picture. And as I said, I share your concerns, but this war in Israel is, as you would say, the thing itself. Hamas hates Israel and America for the same reasons. So to paraphrase Donald Trump, it's the U.S. they're really after. Israel's just in the way.